Hello, this is a quick video to intro what you're supposed to do with this light board program and to help you get it set up and running. So um, if you go to Google Classroom, you should find a light board assignment. And all the instructions you need are here, as well as all the files. The files are at the bottom here. So it says download the PDF of the Lightboard program info sheet. So grab that. Hopefully you've done that already. That's what this should look like. Okay. And then next up, watching this video. Great. And now from here on out, I'm going to assume that you've downloaded Eclipse at home. If you haven't, keep watching the video so you can see what you're supposed to do still. But if you've been able to download Eclipse, I'm going to create a new Java project called Lightboard with a package called CS2. We're going to download the driver and Lightboard classes, which are right here in Google Classroom, and copy-paste them into the CS2 package in the project. Then we're going to fill in the missing code and submit your output. I need the driver and the Lightboard Java files, so three things, to this assignment. Now, all the directions I'm about to show you and the steps I'm about to show you are also in this file. So if you click on this file in Google Classroom, this will also give you step-by-step -step instructions on how to set up the, your Eclipse project if you need it. Um, but let me just show you right now. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to go to File, New, Java Project, and you're going to name it Lightboard. Make sure this first button under Project Layout is clicked. Some of you have a default clicked there, some of you don't. Hit Finish. Okay. So now I've got a Lightboard project over here. And you're going to right-click, New, Package, CS2, and make two files on here. So right-click, New, Class, Driver. And you can click Public Static Void Main or not, like we usually do with the driver. We're going to rewrite, overwrite this code anyway in a second. And then you're going to right-click, New, Class, Lightboard. Make sure it's capital L, capital B. Okay, so now you have these empty class files. This is where you go to Google Classroom, open up the driver, and copy everything that's in here, and then go back to Eclipse, and you're going to overwrite everything that's already in the driver. So totally get rid of it, paste over it, now you've got my driver code in there. Okay, there's that. And then go to Lightboard and do the same thing. So go to the, oops, go to the Lightboard Java file in Google Classroom, copy everything that's in there, and Highlight everything that's in the Lightboard class in Eclipse right now. Paste right over it. You can fill out the headings, but it's got all of the methods you'll need. You'll see there's an error on this one because it's a public Boolean and you're not returning a Boolean yet. But it also explains, pre and post condition explains what every method's supposed to do. Now if you hit save, the driver shouldn't have any errors. If it does, see if you can figure them out or send me an email. Lightboard, again, will have one error because there's a public Boolean that needs to have some sort of return statement. Okay, so now let's go here and talk about what you're supposed to do. The Lightboard class models a two-dimensional display of rights, so a matrix display of lights, where each light is either on, which is true, or off, false, is represented by a Boolean value. This particular Lightboard is five by five. So here's a Lightboard. You can see that if the lights are all on, you'd get the number four. And here's the array that goes along with it. You can see where all the yellow pieces are. The on lights are true. Everything else is false. So you should have already done this step, or we've already done that. Create a new project called Lightboard. Package the drivers, got those all in there. So we're right here. Once your program is set up, complete the methods random lights and print lights in the Lightboard class. Run the program to see that the board has been created and properly printed. Sample output is shown below. Your output may look slightly different based on what values your matrix is randomly filled with. Okay, so this is what your light boards are going to look like. So a zero represents, or an O, I guess, represents it's on. 
and just a random space represents it's off. So if you go to Eclipse, it said do the random lights class or method and the print lights class. Now you'll notice there's already a Boolean matrix that's been created for you. Boolean bracket, 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 bracket lights. It's a five by five matrix. True means the light is on, false means it's off. For right now, it doesn't have any values in it at all. So you're going to start with this random lights method. There's no precondition because you're not sending it anything in here. But what it's supposed to do is it's supposed to reset the light board. Each light has a 40% probability of being turned on. So what you need to do in this method is you need to go through this lights matrix. So a double for loop. You know how to go through matrices from the um, notes that you took last week. And inside, you want to do something with math.random that 40% of the time, if it's a number between, let's say, I don't know, you can do whatever you want, but let's say you make a number, random number from 1 to 10, then maybe the numbers 1 through 4 can mean on. So if it's a number, from, if the random number is 1 through 4, set that spot in the matrix equal to true. Otherwise, set it to false. You don't have to use 1 through 10. You can use whatever you want as long as 40% of your numbers give you values of fault true. And if it's a random number that's not one of those 40% of numbers, turn it to false. Okay, so random lights is supposed to go through the matrix, create a random number, and somehow use that random number so that 40% of the time you set the value to true, the rest of the time you set it to false. You're also going to do the print lights method. Again, there's no precondition because there's nothing being sent over, but you're going to go through this lights matrix in the print lights method. And if the current value is true, you're going to print out an O. If the current value is false, you're going to print out a space. And we also did some notes last week on how to go through and print out a matrix so that it looks like a matrix. So go through all the rows, go through all the columns. When you finish a whole row, put a new line so that the next row starts on a new row or next, if that makes sense. But this is, after you do step one, you should get output that looks something like this. Again, I said your output may look slightly different because it's being filled by random trues and falses. So you might not get exactly this output, but it should look something like that. Okay. Second step, complete the method evaluate light where I give you a row and column. It's going to return true if the number of lights in this row is equal to the number of lights in this column, false otherwise. So here's an example of a random board. If I called 1-1, one, one, there's two trues in row 1, and there's four trues in column run. So it's going to return false. If I say 2-0, there's three trues in this row. There's one true in this column. So, oops, sorry, I was doing 0, 2. 2, 0 is right here, down 2 over 0. There's two trues in this row. There's two trues in this column. So this would return true. If I do 0, 4, so 0, 4 is this spot right here. Three trues in the row, zero trues in the column, so it returns false. And then one more example. If I do 4, 4, no trues no trues. So since there's the same number of trues in both that row and column, it returns true. Okay, so to do this section, you're going to go to evaluate light. It's given a row and column, and you can assume they're in bounds. You need to count up how many trues are in this row. So go through the matrix in that row and count up how many spots are true. Count up the number of trues in this column. Again, go through the matrix and count up how many lights in that column are true. And in the end, if you kind of need two counters, two accumulators, an accumulator for the row and accumulator for the column. If those accumulators are equal, if there's the same number of lights on in the row and column, return true, otherwise return false. Okay, that is this section. Now it says remove the comments on lines 20 and 26 of the driver and run the program to check that it works. So if you look at the driver, lines 20 
and 26 are commented out right now. Once you complete this second step, remove those comments and then run your program again. And you should see if that evaluate lights method works. It's going to be sending it based off of whatever values in 22 for you and in 40. So you can kind of check your random matrices and see if that works. All right. So I need everyone to get through this step to get credit. So if you want credit, get here for credit. But I would like to see if you can go on and do this also. And especially if you're taking AP next year, you should be able to do this next step. Complete the method set lights in the Lightboard class, which takes an array of integers and fills the two-dimensional array according to the following. So new lights, which is this array that's being sent over, has length 25, because there's 25 spots in a 5 by 5 board. So this is an array. New lights is an array, not a matrix. So it's an array going from 0 up to 24. It contains only ones and zeros. So sometimes there's ones here, sometimes there's zeros, whatever. Row zero of the light board is determined by the first five elements of new lights. So if I have this matrix now, five by five matrix, row zero is going to be determined by zero through four in this array. And then row 1 would be determined by 5 through 9, etc. So a value of 1 in new lights corresponds to on, 0 corresponds to off. So basically this is setting up a light board with specific values. So instead of me giving you random values, these have specific values turned on and off. The driver contains integer arrays that will make the light board display the num numerals 1, 2, and 3. So here's an integer array called 1, where I've got 1s in all of the, this third column, zeros everywhere else. So you can kind of see the number 2 with all my 1s here, and you can see the number 3 with all my 1s here. So I'm sending these, and these are all arrays, arrays that are initialized to certain values. I'm sending these arrays over to the set lights method. So what the set slice method is supposed to do is take this array, so you can see set lights, take the array that I send it, and now go through the matrix, and using the values in that array, if it's a 1, turn the next spot on. If it's a 0, turn the next spot off. So you're setting the lights matrix in set lights using the new lights array, if that makes sense. Once you finish those, remove the comments on lines 29 and 56 of the driver. So on lines 29 and 56, I've commented out all of this section. Try to run the program, see if that set lights method works. And if it does, you should see matrices print out, say, 1, 2, and 3. Your last step, now you create integer arrays to represent the numbers eight, 7, 8, and 9 and run the program and submit your final output. So I want you, here's some final output. There's the random stuff, it says true or false. Everybody has to get to here. So you need to get to here if you want credit for this program. If you're taking AP, you should do this next step. Here's where one, two, and three print out. I want you to make matrices that you can, or arrays, for 7, 8, and 9 that you can send over. So what I mean by that step, after you get these working, 1, 2, and 3, you're going to kind of copy this code, but make one called 7, and put 1s that would make this look like a 7, and do one for 8, and put 1s that would make this look like an 8, and do the same for 9. And then you can do this code again, but send over your new arrays, 7, 8, and 9, and see if they print out correctly. Okay, so that's the general gist of this program. Hopefully this video at least kind of showed you what you have to do. Try to get a start on that, and if you get stuck anywhere, let me know. But when you're done, 
submit your final output, which would be either this if you stop before that last step or this whole output if you do all of the steps, if you're taking AP. Submit the output, submit your driver file, and submit your lightboard file to Google Classroom. Good luck. Let me know if you're running into problems.